I want to talk today about the nature of the reality we live in. I want to talk today about the lies we've been told and the lies we continue to believe. I want to talk today about the depth of the rabbit hole. And we all think we know just how deep the rabbit hole goes. But what if I were to tell you that it's bottomless? What if I were to tell you that it has no end? It's that bad. What if I were to tell you in my profanity, in my apostasy, that gynocentrism, which I formerly believed to be the engine fueling civilization, is not the engine fueling civilization, but the engine holding it back. What if I were to tell you, in contrast to most of the ideas that have been proposed about the nature of the family unit, about traditionalism, about the nuclear family being the building block of civilization, that all of these things came together and led to the advanced civilization we have. That we have an advanced civilization, not because of that, but in spite of it. Now I want you to think about how little time a working man has, particularly a working man of a traditional family unit. He goes to work, he spends most of his time at work, he comes home, he's tired, and even then, if he's lucky, if he can find the energy, he might find time to consecrate himself to his hobbies, to his interests. Now think about some of the greatest minds who ever lived. What I like to refer to as apex minds, and no, most of us are not apex minds, including myself. People like Leibniz, Newton, Tesla, Archimedes, perhaps the greatest mathematician who ever lived, and not just in the spheres of mathematical science or physics. Think about Da Vinci, Michelangelo, possibly the greatest artist who ever lived. They had time to work on what they were interested in. They had time to pursue their interests. And yes, they were apex minds. They were gifted. But one principal factor here is time that the working man simply doesn't have. And now you're slowly beginning to understand this equation. When I say that we have advanced civilization in spite of the stifling, traditionalist, nuclear family building block, it's because in spite of all the burdens and obligations that these men had, somehow some of them still managed to find enough time to engage in intellectual, creative discovery, which then led to the developments we see today. So when we say, for example, that the traditionalist model led to the creation of civilization, it's a bit akin to saying that we admire an exceptional sprinter for his speed whilst having his legs bound and hopping about. We admire him because, in spite of the fact that he cannot run, he's still pretty fast. But this is only a piece of the puzzle. One piece of a gigantic mess, in fact. How many of you work jobs you enjoy? How many of you think, upon arriving at work, that the best thing about your workday is the hour you get to clock out? I bet a lot of you do. I know, I do the same. I finished a 14-hour shift yesterday, thinking to myself, the whole time that I can't wait to get out of here, all I could do was look forward to going home. Upon arriving at home, I was so exhausted I couldn't do anything. I lay down on the couch. I crashed. And I woke up at about 4 in the morning, and here I am. Rinse and repeat. <laughs> now I want to talk about something that I think is far more profound, debilitating, damaging, and insidious than gynocentrism. I want to talk about the nature of the rabbit hole, the nature of reality that we live in right now. Now I've talked about the traditionalist setup, uh, 
having men having their hands bound and their legs bound, not being able to fulfill their true creative potential. But it's not just that. It's the system itself. It's the very system we live in. You see, we have a flawed and skewed concept of productivity. We do not look at human productivity as the gold standard. We look at economic productivity as the gold standard. We have this magical term, GDP. So, if I load a couple of boxes up onto a lorry, and those products get shipped to Slovenia, I've contributed to GDP. I am productive. And yet I go home with no sense of accomplishment, feeling drained and exhausted, and that's about it. Maybe you're an accountant for a company. Maybe you're crunching numbers. Maybe the company made big profits. I guess you're productive. Do you feel productive? Do you feel good? I bet you don't. I bet you just can't wait to get home. When handbags are made, lipstick, junk, junk food, all contributes to GDP. Everyone involved is being productive. Great. How many of these people feel content, any sense of satisfaction? You see, these people, and I'm no exception, in fact, all of us, were ruled by fear. We choose our jobs, our courses of study, our professions, not based on our passions, our interests, our loves, but rather for reasons of existential fear, because we will starve to death if we don't do it, quite literally. And I want you to think about that. That is so simple a concept. Think about how base it is that all the lesser beasts are faced with similar concerns. The carnivores of the plains of Africa or the tundra, that's all that's in it for them. You know, eat or starve. And for all of our advances, that's all we can do. That's the best we can do right now. And we are ruled by fear. So in contrast to all of that, I want to introduce the concept of human productivity. It's not a concept of economic productivity. It's not a concept of providing a pragmatic value to the masses. It's a concept that enshrines not the base instincts, the nether instincts of man, but his gifts. You see, we are gifted as a species. We have been blessed, quite literally, by the gods of chance, endowed with our higher faculties, and in particular, endowed with the faculty of language. And all of this allows us to do things that no other species can. And what do we do? We pack boxes. We drive taxi cabs. We crunch numbers. We are wasting our fucking time. You, I, all of us, we are wasting our fucking time. Hours go by, days go by, weeks, years. Rinse and repeat until maybe, just maybe, you're able to retire. Senile, decrepit. Hey, but who cares? That's life, right? Human productivity enshrines the best in man. Creative, intellectual, artistic endeavor. Pursuing your interests, your passions. That is what human productivity is all about. And yet, of course, it's not rewarded. I'm sure you know the life of Nicholas Tesla. You know that he died in penury and without means, despite his mind. You see, we need to get past this concept of pragmatic application, because the pragmatism often comes later. Look at the invention of calculus by, take your pick, either Leibniz or Newton. None of these guys was thinking, yes, I am working on calculus to provide a value to the masses, and all of society will benefit. In fact, it took centuries for the benefits of calculus to truly be realized. But without it, there would be no advances in engineering, aerodynamics, and so on and so forth. It has provided an enormous, immense value to humanity, simply because these apex minds were left to their own devices to pursue their own interests. How many people forego their interests for reasons of fear, existential fear? Maybe some guy decided to get into business management because he thought that's a good way to earn money. But maybe his real passion 
oddly enough, was to study insect navigation. And maybe, just maybe, if he had studied insect navigation, maybe, just maybe, his studies and his discoveries might have led to years down the line, something along the lines of artificially intelligent navigation systems that work far more efficiently than anything we have now. Well, we'll never know, probably. The point I'm trying to make is that we sacrifice far too much, and we are wasting our time day in and day out. We are letting our minds wither away, and our bodies, by dint of the ravages of time, well, that comes naturally. So we are killing ourselves, most of us, and this is a problem. But that's the nature of the rabbit hole. Those are the deaths. You know, little Timmy growing up, he was told every lie you could imagine. Santa Claus, the tooth fairy, he was told you can be anything you want when you grow up. You can be anything you want to be. And then when he grows up and becomes an adult and has to pay taxes and go through the rigmarole, he's told, well, that's just life, suck it up. So we have this paradigm of raising our children, telling them lies, they can be anything they want. And then when they become adults, they're told just to shut up, suck it up, and deal with it. This is fucked up. It's a fundamental problem. This is the lie. This is part of the rabbit hole. You see, we're all indentured servants. We're all just slaving away. And even if we're not just slaving away for the sake of a family, we're slaving away for the sake of our own selves. And we're not benefiting from it. Not really. We're surviving. We're eating. We're shitting. We're pissing. We're breathing. That's not good enough. It's not good enough. It's not good enough for me, and it's not good enough for you, and it's not good enough for the vast majority of men. We are wasting our time contributing to GDP. And life is passing us by. Because in my free time, I'm productive. I study cancer glucose metabolism. I study exercise physiology. I read up on nutritional science. I learn more about Sony Vegas. I learn more about texture remodeling. I learn about the world, about myself. I study things. And I have my fun, which is part of that with gaming. But the point I'm trying to make is, when I'm contributing to GDP, I'm not doing anything. I'm just wasting my time. It's a waste of fucking time. And life is too short and too brief for you or me to be doing this. I want out. You know, it might have been 50 cents' uh, motto, get rich or die trying. Me? Get free or die trying. I'm tired of this shit. I want out. And if I have any goal in life, the goal is to get out. To maximize my human productivity. Because the stuff I've been talking about, this is nether apes. This is, this is, this is the, the very depth of nether apes. And this is the real depth of the rabbit hole, how far it goes. It's not just gynocentric, it's the entire system. It's stifling, it's soul crushing, it deadens your spirit, your mind, and your soul. And I want nothing to do with it, not anymore. I want fucking out, and you should want out too. Now, there's a lot more to be said on this, but I have time constraints, as you know. I wanted to say more, but I can't. So, that will be the subject of a later video. A much more lengthy video, and a video probably not on this channel. Until then, may the gods watch over you.